Magnify your name. Magnify your name. He is worthy. Congratulations being at the right place at the right time. Ever been to a sporting event and they make a big play and they say, let's go. That's what we're doing. You can be seated here. Um, welcome the Spirit of Faith Family Church. Uh, any visitors, we welcome you, people who have been here before. Um, we are hosting Dr. Jerry Savell. Um, with him coming, we're believing for utterance. Amen. We're believing for the highest flow for him yes, to operate in his highest office. Amen. And when he does that, you get something. Yes, when we do that, our church, your church gets something. But ultimately, the body of Christ Amen. is the platform for Dr. Jerry Savell. So open your hearts. Be expecting. You already showed that already. So I just have a few short announcements, and I'll get out of the way. Um, Brother Jerry did bring some books and tapes and T-shirts back there. So that's available uh, after service now. Also, this is going to be archived. It's going to be archived at eberlyministry.org or through our GEM Facebook or through the YouTube channels. Some of you might be familiar with that, so it's going to be available. Uh, please turn off your cell phones. If you can vibrate them or uh, mute them, that would be fantastic. And also, if you, my last announcement, if you're a uh, mother nursing, uh, there's a room. If you go through the doors, it'll be the first door uh, on the left there. So they have... TV's in there, so you're not going to miss anything if that's your situation. All right, it's time. Let's go. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Go ahead and stand up with us tonight. Hallelujah. In God's great love, his great love, even when we were yet in sin, he sent his son Jesus. Now we can come before him redeemed. We are washed clean by the blood. Hallelujah. Glory to God, Father, we thank you for the blood of Jesus. We thank you that we are redeemed and we stand before you clean.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on, lift your hands, lift your voice. Magnify that name, the name above every name, the name that we worship, the name that we magnify. Glory to your name, Father. Jesus, we worship you tonight. We thank you for the highest flow for this service. We're grateful, Father God, for the privilege of gathering in your name. We thank you, Father, for the plan that you have for this service. You said your servant, Brother Hagen, that you have a plan for every service. And Father, we come up to that the highest flow of your plan. We don't want the good or the acceptable. We want the perfect will of God tonight. We thank you, Father God, for your will being fully manifested. Father, thank you for this privilege we have of having a general in the body of Christ in our midst, one who speaks with authority because he's proven, because, Father God, he's been faithful. And we thank you, Father God, he'll have utterance tonight to speak as of the oracles of God. And we thank you, Father God, we have gathered to hear like, the, uh, like the, the man in the New Testament said, we are all here to hear what the Lord has said to you. Father God, we've gathered in faith, believing for utterance. And we thank you for the supernatural flow. We thank you for miracles, signs, and wonders. We thank you, Father, for needs met all across this room. And Father, we thank you tonight for the, the, uh, the, uh, that we'll all be changed, we'll all be different. Glory to God. And Dr. Savelle will leave here satisfied. He got out what he wanted to get out. What, the, what you put in his heart, Father, it'll all come out in Jesus' name. We thank you for it. We give you all the praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God, for the brother and sister on our left and right. And, and Father, for your love for them. And that this service will be a great supply to their life. And impart into their life what they need. Father, we'll be careful to give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Give a shout this evening. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Well, greet three people, three or four people around you. Just tell them it's so good to see you in church tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good evening, everyone. Congratulations, you're in the right place at the right time. So good to have everyone. If you're from this congregation or if you're visiting from another city or maybe you're a pastor or a minister, we have so many good minister friends here. Thank you for coming. Hallelujah. Uh, your supply, your faith, it helps pull and get what God has for us. So thank you, ministers that are here and everyone that's come. Praise God. You will not be disappointed. Hallelujah. How many of you know the, the uh, utterance of a service uh, that a man of God or woman of God gets in a service is not just up to the minister? Paul said, pray for me that utterance would be given unto me. So we've been praying. We've been believing God. This is a big deal. Amen. Ain't nothing in Iowa happening tonight that's more important than this right here. Come on now. <laughs> Amen. Friday night. I'm telling you, that's the night to have church. That's right. So it's so good to have Dr. Savell with us. We don't want to take any more time. I'm going to ask Reverend Eric Deaton to come. I said it right. Deaton, yes, come on up. He's got some uh, products to announce. Thank you, sir. Good evening, everybody. Yeah. Everybody good? Yeah. We got any safe folks in here? Yeah. You've been delivered? You've been set free? Yeah. You happy? <laughs> All right. Me too. Okay, so back here is our resource table. If you uh, haven't been introduced to Dr. Svell, he's known as Dr. Favor all over the world. Let me tell you, you don't know what you don't know about Favor. Supernatural increase and promotion, that's Favor. It's restoration of everything the enemy has stolen. It's honor in the midst of our adversaries. It's increase in assets, especially in land. I like this one. What's well, recognition? It's promotion in front of other people. It's preferential treatment. I like that one. Uh, Dr. Savell and I were just in Alabama, and um, 
there's a men's store that he likes to go to when we go to this church and so we went to the men's store soon after we landed and and uh he knows what he likes and and boom he's there and he's at the counter and why well, i saw this suit that i liked and uh I looked at the price on it, and I don't know if you're into suits or not, but there's an Italian uh, company called Canali, and they make a very nice suit. And they range between, you know, $2,500, $3,000. It was marked down 50%, $1,250. So I went and tried it on. Didn't fit exactly right, you know, but, but I liked it. Well, that night we went to the church. The church gave him a gift card to that men's store. So the next day, he says, hey, I, I want to go use this gift card at the men's store. So I went straight for that suit again because I'm thinking, you know, maybe it'll, it'll fit differently today. <laughs> <clears throat> and I looked at this sticker, and it had been marked down from $1,250, which was 50% off, to $400. That's the favor of God. So I went and tried it on. I got in front of the mirror. I said, it fits perfect. <laughs> and this is the suit. <laughs> I call that the favor suit. And that's what God does in, in our lives all the time. He does that all the time. And so we got to where we, we, I don't know if we coined this phrase, we should trademark this phrase, but it says, hey, that's the favor of God. Because when we see the favor of God on our life, we recognize it. We say, hey, that's the favor of God. We speak it out. The more we speak it out, the more we see it. And it creates this cycle of favor where you're walking in recognition, preferential treatment, all the promotion, all the time. So next time when you go to Walmart, And that front parking spot, that car pulls out right as you're pulling in. You say, hey, that's a favor of God. And another little mini book he put out, Living Under the Canopy of God's Favor. You know, we all know that there's evil coming on the earth, but it doesn't have to get on you. You can be under the canopy of God's favor, God's protection, God's favor, goodness surrounding you, where you can't stop it from raining. But you can stop it from raining on you. So that's another one. So we put all these in a packet together if you want it all. It's, a, it's, a, it's called our favorite pack, and it's back there. Uh, also, too, this is, this is one that, that they did. Anybody wants some answered prayer, you're praying about some things. This is called the prayer petition. It teaches you how to use Scripture to, to create a petition to God and begin to, begin to pray that out, and God will answer your prayer every time. And then this is a, a book that we got from Oral Roberts Ministry. Dr. Savell said that this is the, the book that changed his life and, and where he learned to make God his source. And that's what this book talks about, and it's only $8, and we have a limited number of those. And then this is a jump drive that has 50 of his top messages on it. Uh, when he heard the call of God as Oral Roberts, he was watching Oral Roberts on television, and Oral Roberts was preaching the fourth man. He heard an audible voice from God saying, one day you'll preach like that. Well, one day, Brother Copeland called him up, and uh, he, he didn't know what he was going to preach, but he opened his Bible, and it fell open to Daniel chapter 3, and he began to preach about the fourth man in the fire. And at the end, he goes through in Genesis, he's the seed of a woman. In Exodus, he's the Passover lamb. In Leviticus, he's the high priest. In Numbers, he's the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. Who is this fourth man? I'll tell you who he is. And he goes through the whole scripture, every, every book of the Bible where it shows who Jesus is. Well, miracles broke out in that place. People got out of wheelchairs and ran around, and the, it was a move of God. That's just one sermon that's on there, so you can throw that in your car when you're driving to Iowa City to go to the mall. <laughs> and then lastly, 2024, the Lord told him that this would be a year of progressing, advancing, experiencing promotion, and seeing your highest expectations fulfilled. Anybody believing for anything? 
This is your year. This is our year, Saints. 2024. We're going to advance. It doesn't matter what the news says. It doesn't matter what people say. We are advancing. We're seeing our highest expectations fulfilled this year. Amen. God bless you guys. Glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Pastor Tommy's church already has all those products, so just buy them all out tonight, all right? <laughs> Pastor, Pastor McBride. Praise God. How do you follow that, that, my brother here? I don't know how to follow that, but I do want to be, as I introduce Dr. Seville tonight, I want to uh, share, I don't like to take time before a uh, guest minister comes. We like to turn it right over to him, but something I've got to share with you before he comes. Um, uh, I know Dr. Seville will enjoy this. God brought you into a testimony in our life that manifested today. He brought you into it two years ago. And so I just want to briefly, you know, the Bible says honor those whom, to whom honor is due. Honor who God uses in your life. And uh, it's proper to do that. We give, we, we, Pastor Debbie and I's pastor is Pastor Nancy Dufresne. We honor her the highest. And then others God uses. We honor anybody that God brings into our life to use us. I mean, I mean to use in our, in our lives. And uh, two years ago, um, we were, Pastor, uh, Pastor Tommy. Pastor Tommy Roberts, would you and your lovely bride stand up tonight? Let's, let's give them a great big thank you. And God bless you tonight. Amen. <clears throat> good covenant brothers here brother and sister here my wife and I love you dearly but they are they've, they've been a real supply in helping uh, this ministry by having Dr. De, uh, Dr. Dufresne Dr. Seville coming uh, to this church so thank you so much but anyway this testimony 30 years ago and I won't this would be real short 30 years ago the Lord spoke to me and said there's coming a time in your ministry you're going to need you're going to need to get into aviation he said I want you to not say anything other than just what I, I say to you say uh, all the time and set that in set begin to set that in motion so we began to do that recently a couple of years ago spirit of God said you've come to that season and uh, and then he said, I want you to begin to sow seed. I want you to begin to, uh, you know, to, to uh, get ready for it and so forth and so on. So we began to do that. And then um, back uh, two years ago, March, almost, almost two years ago, just here in a couple of weeks, March 13th of 2022, Dr. Savelle, you were in Life Point Church in Coralville preaching and you stopped in the middle of your service and I want to dim the lights and this is just a, a less than a minute long I think I want you to watch something that happened here same anointing that's on me for aviation and airplanes you've blessed me with 10 different airplanes in the last 50 years debt free do it for him hallelujah Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. We received that. And this afternoon at 1230, in the afternoon, the manifestation of that which he got into agreement with us landed in Monticello Regional Airport. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. And, uh, and uh, that are, you may be seated, but that aircraft uh, touched down and will begin to be used tomorrow to go because God gave us an assignment to pastor two churches 300 miles apart as well as travel in the body of Christ. And so we needed something faster. Amen. And that aircraft, you can see it there, that's, uh, that, that's this afternoon. That aircraft, praise God, November 6611 Echo, has been now uh, assigned to the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. And here's my favorite part about that aircraft. It's not the color. It's that it's paid for in full. <laughs> Hallelujah. Exactly. I'm telling you what, my wife and I pray God hears us. Dr. Jerry Savelle prays God hears him. And when we get into agreement, watch out, there's a power explosion coming. And uh, every rivet, ribbit, rivet, excuse me, on that plane, every gasket, every, I mean, everything, every boat, the wings are paid for, the engine's paid for, the propeller's paid for, the whole thing's paid for. 
It's got a brand new, well, it's a re redone engine. It's a, a Dr. Seville, it's a, as you can probably tell by looking at it, it's a Beechcraft Bonanza B36TC. And uh, it is basically a state-of-the-art avionics, $100,000 avionics panel. Uh, just, uh, you know, because the anointing needs safety. I don't, I'm not here to, I, I'm just here to say that this man, this man has been a blessing into this ministry already, and he was only here one time. And I believe we ought to just recognize that tonight. The glory goes to God, but how many of you know there are people God brings into your life to use into your, in your life? Hallelujah. <clears throat> And so thank you for your agreement and your faith partnership with this ministry. <clears throat> of course, I knew as soon as that, because the way he said that, do, do for him what's, what you've done for me, I knew that meant become a partner with this ministry. Sow seed monthly. So we began to do that because how many of you know partnerships, how you connect with the grace on somebody else? And so we did that. And Dr. Savell, thank you so much for uh, sowing into our lives, you know, just, just by being faithful, obeying God like that. And uh, every time we go preach, every time we go to the other church and preach, come back here to preach, you have a seed in everybody's life that is, that is, uh, everybody's life that has changed. Praise God. I, I, it just seems to me like this is pretty good ground, don't you think? <laughs> This is pretty good ground right here. So we've already had, our, this has already become, you know, this, what are we in February? And it's already our year of progression, advancement, and promotion. Amen. And our highest expectations are already beginning to come to pass. Praise God. So I'm going to ask the ushers to come and take this podium down. You can uh, turn the lights back on. But would you stand this evening and welcome Dr. Savelle to the platform. Thank you so much, doctor, for coming. <clears throat> Awesome. I rejoice with you. Praise God. Thank you. All right. Let's give the Lord another great shout. Amen. Praise God. Glory to God. Well, if the same anointing that's on me for aviation is on you, there are more to come. That's just the beginning. Yeah. Hallelujah. My chief pilot is right over here. Come up here, Brad. I like to say in God I trust in him too. I love this man. He, he's a great blessing to me and my ministry and our family. And uh, I couldn't ask for a better man to be in charge of our aviation department. And we have together uh, produced the finest aviation department I have ever had in 55 years of ministry. Thank you. And I attribute a lot of it to this man right here, praise God. Give him a good hand. Thank you. Amen. All right, you can be seated, praise God. Everybody doing well tonight? Yes. Sounds like everybody's happy. Yes. Amen. Now, I want you guys to pray for Eric that he'll get a little excitement in his life. You know? Man, if you can preach after he does the, you know, resource offers, you're not called, you know. <laughs> Hallelujah. And we're blessed to have him and his wife on our team as well. They are, oh, we got, we got some fine people that work in this ministry, praise God. Make my job a whole lot easier. All right, open your Bibles first of all to Isaiah chapter 42, and let me say once again, pastors, uh, thank you for hosting us tonight. It's a joy to be with you once again, and thank all of you for coming out on a Friday night. I mean, you're in the right place tonight. Amen. Praise God. And there's the lady that's helped us at the hotel. Good to see you again. Amen. Isaiah chapter 42, and I'm, I'm quite sure that you're all familiar with this verse, but let's read verse 9. Behold, the former things are come to pass, and new things do I declare. You know, this is Isaiah. Of course, this is, he's speaking uh, in God's behalf, and God is saying to the people that new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. 
Now, in our day, that's the job of the Holy Spirit, is to reveal to us what is to come. Jesus said, when the Spirit of truth has come, He'll not only lead and guide you into truth, but He will tell you things to come. I like knowing in advance what God has on His agenda. I remember when I came to the Lord in 1969, I, I knew nothing about the Word of God, as Brother Copeland has said many times, and I was the same way. Uh, he was scripturally illiterate, and I was the same way. I knew nothing. And I had married a young girl that I grew up with. She lived down the end of the street uh, road. We lived in the country. And uh, we knew each other. She's two years younger than me. And we knew each other all of our young life. Uh, never, never dreamed that I'd wind up marrying her. She knew it. <laughs> that's, that's true. Uh, we moved on that, that road uh, when I was just about to turn 11 years old. I was still 10. And her family already lived there. And she was eight. And as uh, soon as they unloaded our furniture into the new house we were moving into, new to us, uh, when they got the bicycle off the, off the truck, I got on the bicycle and rode down the road to check out the new neighborhood. And when I got down close to the end of the road, uh, she and her sister, of course, I didn't know them then. I hadn't met them yet. They were out in the front yard playing. And I went down the end of the road and the little country church that eventually my parents uh, became members of. Uh, I got down to the road and turned around and started coming back. And I noticed that they were not in the front yard anymore. Well, I didn't know this until many years later when, when we started dating and, and we're talking about marriage. And she went in the house and told her mother that morning when I rode by there, I just saw the boy I'm going to marry. He said, we're gonna, we're gonna, he's going to be saved. He's going to be full of the Holy Ghost. And we're going to preach the gospel. And we're going to Africa. <laughs> now, if she'd have told me that when we were kids, I'd have never spoke to her again. Because <laughs> that was not my plan. My dad raced automobiles. My dad restored classic automobiles. My dad built hot rods. And he represented everything I wanted to be. He did paint and body work. And uh, from, the eight, from the time I was nine years old, uh, he began to teach me that. And that's all I ever wanted to do. I wanted to walk in the same footsteps of my father. And I wanted, to, I wanted him to teach me because he was one of the best. And uh, I wanted him to teach me everything he knew about it. And I was going to take all the expertise and go into business for myself someday and do exactly what I'd learned from him. And so uh, if she'd have told me when I was not quite 11 years old, God told me that you're going to be the man I marry. We will preach the gospel. I'm serious. I'd have never spoke to her again because <laughs> that was not my plan. Even though one month later, I'm in Oklahoma City visiting my grandparents and somebody turned on the old black and white field code television set and the first picture that came on was Oral Roberts preaching his most famous tent sermon, The Fourth Man. And I was captivated. I was standing there in the living room with my cousins and relatives, and, and uh, I'd never heard of Oral Roberts. And I heard. It wasn't audible, but it sounded audible to me. In fact, I thought it was one of my cousins talking. And I heard, someday you'll preach like that. Someday you'll pray for people like that. And I turned to my cousin Joe to see what, to ask him, what did you say? And he had already left. He wasn't standing there anymore. So I turned to my left to ask my cousin Donnie, what did you say? And he'd already left. And I'm standing there alone, and I thought, who said that? And I realized, you know, that it apparently was God. Well, God was following up my plans. <laughs> and so even in my little mind, I thought, if I never tell anybody about this, then I won't have to do it. And God will go find somebody who really wants to do that. So I never told a soul. I never told my parents. And, uh, and even when Carol and I uh, started dating, and we got to the place where we were uh, talking about marriage, the night before our wedding, she said to me, 
Jerry, uh, you don't know this, but that's when I found out her going in and telling her mother she saw the boy she was going to marry and so forth. And she said, uh, I told my mother that I was going to marry you. You would be born again, filled with the Holy Ghost, preach the gospel, and we'd go to Africa. That was the night before the wedding. I said, you're marrying the wrong man. I'm not doing any of that. I said, if you marry me, you're going to spend the rest of your life on a racetrack. I'm racing cars. She said, you don't know the power of intercessory prayer. I said, I've never heard of it. She said, don't be concerned about it. All you got to do is just go in there tomorrow night when the pastor says, do you take this woman? You say, I do. And me and God will take care of the rest. <laughs> I mean, well, I knew I loved her and I knew I wanted to marry her. So, you know, I thought, well, I can, I can talk her out all that. So we married. And not long after that, uh, well, I was doing paint and body work at dealerships and uh, trying to save enough money to go in business for myself. Uh, I'm racing a 65 GTO and uh, I'm hauling race cars with my dad all over the southern part of the United States. And uh, I'm, I'm doing what I dreamed of doing. And then shortly after that, I was able to go in business for myself. And uh, so that's what I was doing in 1969 when Kenneth Copeland came to our hometown. And my wife went to every service, three services a day for a week, begged me to go every night when I came home. I didn't want to go. I said, Carolyn, I don't want to hear another preacher. Uh, you go and uh, enjoy yourself. She said, uh, you're, you're not really having fun. You're running from God. And I'd never told her about that experience I had. I wasn't about to tell her that. That would have been leverage. <laughs> she would have used it against me, you know. <laughs> she didn't. She knew by the Spirit of God, but she never heard me say it. Nobody had ever heard me say it. I never told a soul about that experience. And uh, so anyway, she, the last night of that meeting, she said, this is his last night. She said, I've, I've been in this all my life. I've been filled with the Holy Ghost since I was eight years old but I've never heard a man preach like this man. And I said, what makes him different from all the rest? It's just the message he preaches. I've, I've never heard anything like it. And I want you to go. It's his last night. And uh, she said, and if you don't like this preacher, because I didn't like any of the others that she took me to. <laughs> and she said, if you don't like this preacher, and I probably told this story last time I hear, but it's my sermon. I want to hear it again. <laughs> And uh, so she said, if you don't like this preacher, then I'll never ask you to go to another meeting. I said, you promise? She said, I promise I'll never ask you to go to another meeting. I said, now that's the deal I've been waiting on. I said, I'm going to go clean up and I'm going. And you promise if I don't like him, I'll never have to go again. I promise. And, and so we got in the car and headed toward the church. And I said, uh, I already don't like him. She said, you haven't even heard him yet. I said, I know, but I know I won't like him. She said, well, at least go and sit there and listen to him for a little while. I said, well, the moment I don't like him, I'm going to get up and leave, and you get home the best way you can. She said, well, I've been doing that every night anyway, so, you know, if that's what it takes to get you there, fine. So we were on our way to the church, and I said, now, who is this you want me to hear? She said, Kenneth Copeland. I said, Kenneth Copeland? Kenneth Copeland. I kept saying it over and over. Kenneth Copeland. I said, I know who that is. She said, how would you know Kenneth Copeland? You don't go to church. I said, well, I didn't say I knew him. I said, I know who it is. She said, well, how would you know who Kenneth Copeland is? I said, well, in 1957, and, and I knew all the songs from the, 40, from the late 40s, the 50s, and the 60s. I knew every song that was on the radio. I knew all the words. I knew who recorded them. I, I, and to this day, Brother Copeland and I, we, we play from time to time, name that tune. I always win. <laughs> okay. And, uh, and, and I remembered there was a man on the radio in 1957, had a hit record in the top 20 called The Pledge of Love, and his name was Kenneth Copeland. And I, I said, he had a, 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 a hit, top 20 hit, and his name was Kenneth Copeland. His song was The Pledge of Love. And I started singing it to her. And she said, it's not the same man. I said, well, how do you know it's not the same man? 
She said, I just know. I said, well, can't rock and roll singers get saved? She said, well, I'm sure they can, but I just don't think it's the same man. I said, well, I'm going for two reasons tonight. Number one, number one, if I don't like him, then I'll never have to go again. If I'm still there at the, at the end of his service, I'm going to go up and ask him if he's that same man who had that hit record called The Pledge of Love. I said, I'd like to be right one time. Are there any other husbands in here that, don't put your hand down, your wife's looking. <laughs> yeah, there's lots of husbands in there, but you're not brave enough to put your hand up. You'd like to be right one time too. It's like my wife still to this day. We, we've been married 57 years and she says, she, you know, she tells me to do things. And I said, you're not my boss. She said, oh yes I am. You just hadn't learned it yet. She, she makes me, makes me, makes me. I said, you're not my mama. I said, well, I'm close to it. She said, I'm close to it. She makes me put on makeup before I preach. Because, you know, everybody records and, you know, it's going around the world. And she said, and you got little red spot, splotches on your face and you, and you need to, she bought makeup for me to take on the road. And before I walked out tonight, I'm putting makeup on. Looking good. She thinks she's my boss. But don't I look pretty? Hallelujah. She even makes me, I'm the president and founder of the Christ, uh, Chariots of Light Christian Bikers. We do, we, we ride motorcycles all over the world. I got chapters all over the world. We have in the last 25 years, won over 500,000 people to Christ through Chariots of Light. She said, now be sure when you go to that rally tonight, put your makeup on. I said, Carolyn, I'm the president of the Chariots of Light. I can't be riding a motorcycle leading this group with makeup on. She said, you obey me? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> but she does keep me straight, praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. I have to admit, she keeps me straight. So anyway, uh, I found out that he, in fact, he, when they turned the service over to him, he started preaching. Fifteen minutes into his sermon, he just stopped. He said, I don't know why I'm saying this. It has absolutely nothing to do with my sermon. I guess somebody in here tonight needs to hear it. 1957, I had a hit record on the radio called The Pledge of Love. He said, I was headed for rock and roll stardom. Dick Clark had set up a tour for everybody that had a hit in the top 20. Uh, Little Richard, Fats Domino, uh, Richie Valens, all of those guys had top, uh, Buddy Holly, all, they were going on tour. And Brother Copeland was one of them that was going on that tour. And, uh, but he got drafted, and while everybody else was promoting their record, Brother Copeland was in basic training. By the time he got out of the military, nobody remembered his name, nobody remembered his song. And he said, besides that, I was called to preach. That was not the way God wanted me to go anyway. He said, all right, let's get back to the message. Now, I'm convinced to this day that he, God had Kenneth Copeland to do that because after I heard him say that, I'm right on the edge of my chair listening to every word he said, and that's the night that changed my life. Hallelujah. Amen. That's the night that changed my life. February the 11th, 1969. I just celebrated 55 years of ministry. Pray. Or I'm in my 55th year of ministry. Praise God. <clears throat> so I've always, I've always asked the Lord, and I learned this from Lester Summerall. Brother Summerall told me years ago when, when I used to preach at his church, uh, just the water, please. Uh, he said when he, when he came to the Lord, he didn't want to preach. He said, he said I, I got saved mad. <laughs> you ever heard him say that? Yeah. I got saved mad because I didn't want to preach. And I knew I was going to have to preach. And, and he said, I felt like God would kill me if I didn't preach. That's what he said. 
And so I, he said, when I went to ministry, I went to the pulpit mad. <laughs> and then finally I accepted the call after I'd been preaching for a while. And, you know, and then, you know, excited about God using me. And, and he said, and finally one day I prayed. He said, God, I, I'm asking you to forgive me for the attitude I had. And then I'm asking you to do this. Don't ever do anything while I'm alive that you don't include me in it. I like that. I said, Brother Sermon, that's my new prayer. Lord, don't ever do anything while I'm living that you don't include me in it. Praise God. And I've been through a lot of movements. I've been through a lot of awakenings. I've been through a lot of uh, moves of God. Has anybody seen the movie, uh, The Jesus Revolution? Have you, have you seen it? I was in it. I wasn't in the movie, but I was in that. I was there when all that happened on Pismo Beach, 1969. And uh, I was part of baptizing thousands of, of hippies and drug addicts in the Pacific Ocean. I spent 13 days in that movement. And, and the Lord said, now go back home and take it to your city. And that, that's what I did. I took it to my city and, and we had s some of the greatest miracles in the streets of Shreveport, Louisiana, to the point that the Sheriff's Department started sending me to every prison in Louisiana, had a great move of God in the prisons. And then Brother Copeland decided he couldn't live without me. And he said, come to Fort Worth. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. And that's where we began our ministry together. And we've been preaching together now 54 out of my 55 years. Praise God. Amen. So I've always, I've always wanted to be a part of any new thing that God is doing. Now, when God says, I will do a new thing, it's not new to Him, but it'll be new to us. There's nothing new to Him. You know, uh, Jesus doesn't nudge Him every once in a while and say, did you know that was going to happen? <laughs> No, I didn't know that was going to happen. I was sleeping. What happened? No. Nothing is new to God. He sees the beginning from the end and the end from the beginning. But it's new to us. And here, even though he's speaking directly to Israel, but it certainly applies to you and me because he's still the God of new things. And I will drink to that. Amen. Amen. He's still the God of new things. And the beautiful part is, even though most of us have seen a lot of things in our life as believers. I mean, I've been so privileged. Uh, I said in some of the previous services that, that I've been doing here in Iowa, that I, I, I consider myself to be one of the most blessed men of our generation. Because my mentors were Kenneth Copeland, Kenneth Hagan, Oral Roberts, and T.L. Osborne. These are the four men that, that trained me, that I learned from. I, I, I became uh, uh, affiliated with them. I traveled with every one of them. I served on Brother Oral Roberts' board for over 20 years. Uh, I've been on Brother Copeland's board for nearly 45 years. Uh, Brother Hagan was in our home. We we're in his home. T.L. Osborne, Everything I ever, I've ever learned about world evangelism, I learned from T.L. Osborne. Amen. And, and because of those relationships, uh, I've, I've had the privilege of experiencing a lot of things. You know, uh, particularly meetings in other nations. I've seen some of the greatest miracles that, that if I told you about them, it, it, it caused the hair on the back of your neck to stand up and take a week to lay down again. <laughs> I mean, I, I was the first time I ever went to Nigeria in 1984. I'm in an open field with over 50,000 people. And uh, they got there like at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, standing shoulder to shoulder, side by side, waiting for me to get there. And I didn't get there until 7 o'clock that night. And it's hot in Nigeria. And they're standing out in that blazing sun. And, and when I drove up there, uh, when they, they took me up there to where the platform was, and I learned all this from T.L. Osborne. And so I, I just preached like Brother Osborne. He would open his crusades with, Jesus Christ, 
the same yesterday, today, and forever. And then he'd make this statement. And if he is indeed alive today, then let him do what he did before they crucified him. And the miracles would begin to flow. And that's exactly what I did when they turned the service over to me that night. I said, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if he is alive, then let him do tonight what he did before they crucified him. 21 blind people instantly received their sight. Praise God. I never preached another word. It was like the anointing was like a wave on the sea, people getting out of wheelchairs, people, people being delivered. I just stood there and had them come up and testify. And once they testified, it just began to spread through the crowd. And after three or four nights, dear Lord, did we ever have a meeting in Nigeria? <clears throat> Amen. So I've seen some things. I've seen the blind... Uh, uh, received their sight in Kenya. Uh, I, I was in uh, Johannesburg, South Africa back in 1981. And uh, we're in an arena there that held about 10,000 people. And the last night I was there, there was an ambulance came. They we're under a big tent. There was an ambulance pulled up outside the tent. And they, they rolled uh, a, a lady out on a, on a gurney and, and put her there. She'd been in the hospital, and I don't remember everything that was wrong with her, but in the natural, was never to recover. And that night when I got up to preach, the Lord said, leave your notebook with your wife. He said, you're not preaching tonight. I said, well, Lord, I had a red hot sermon. I just got it today. He said, it's for another time. Put your notebook away. I said, well, what do you want me to do? He said, when you go up there, you tell the people, there will be miracles in the praise tonight. So I told this large band to stay on the platform. And I just read Psalm 150 about praise him on the loud sounding cymbals, praise him with the string instrument. And I would point to each instrument that was represented in Psalm. And I'd say, praise him on the piano. And they'd start doing that. And I said, praise him, praise him on the string instruments. And they all did that. And I said, praise him on the drums. And they did that. And then there was a guy standing near these bongo drums. And I turned to him. I said, praise him on the bongos. He just looked at me. I said, praise him on the bongos. He just looked at me. I said, do you hear me? Praise him on the bongos. He said, I don't play the bongos. <laughs> I'm an usher. I'm just standing up here. I said, well, you're going to play them tonight. Play the bongo. And boy, he went, whoo, man, he, he got after it. He went to dancing around there, and that woman got off that gurney and took off running around that tent, praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. So I've seen some things. Amen. One of my favorite miracles that I ever experienced here in the States, I was in... Uh, uh, Columbus, is it Columbus? Columbia, South Carolina, in a meeting in a in a in a uh, Assembly of God church, and the pastor asked me to come and stay for about five nights. And uh, the opening night, there was a couple sitting on the front row, and they had a daughter. I later found out that that daughter was about twelve years old, but she she was. Uh, I don't know the, the correct medical term, but layman's term, she was spastic. And she had the mentality of about a four-year-old. She never spoke. She, she had no uh, ability to walk. And she just sat there on that front row while I'm preaching and was, and was like this the whole time and groaning. And this saliva coming out of her mouth that, was, that had the worst stench I'd ever smelled. And... Uh, so I prayed for her one night and uh, they brought her back the night, next night. Couldn't tell any difference. And the last night I was there, no, the night, the, next to the last night I was there, the Lord said to me, ask the parents if you can hold her and carry her around while you preach and the anointing that's on you while you preach will come on her. And I asked the parents. They said yes. 
So I took that little girl in my arms. Now, she's the size of an 11 or 12 year old, but the mentality of a four year old. So she's heavy. Okay. And I'm holding her like this while I'm preaching. And I preached for an hour. And I kept having to shift her from one side to the other because she was heavy. And the whole time she's, she's doing this and, and, and moaning and groaning. And she urinated on my suit. She had no control of her, of her, of her bowels. And, and the stench that came out of her mouth, the saliva was so terrible, I could hardly stand it. And, and so uh, afterwards, I said, now, the Lord told me that the anointing that was on me while I preached was going to come on her tonight. Well, I gave her back to the parents. You couldn't tell any difference. The next morning in the morning service, this little girl walks in all by herself. Her parents behind her. And I said, come on up to the front. Apparently you got a testimony. They brought her up to the front. And the parents said, last night when we took her home, they said, now we, we, we have to keep her in a little bed like, a, like an infant, well, a crib, you know, with rails on it, so she don't fall out on the floor. And said, we put her to bed last night after we got home, and uh, we went to bed, and then all of a sudden we heard a noise. It sounded like it's coming from the kitchen. We got up, turned the lights on, went to her bedroom, turned the lights on. She wasn't in bed. We went down the hall, went into the kitchen, and she sat me in the floor with a box of cereal and, and milk and, and turned when she saw her parents for the first time in her life. She said, Mama, I'm hungry. Can you feed me? They were amazed. They fed her, got her, stood her up. She walked to her bed, and the next morning they bring her into the church. Now, there are many nights I go to bed to this day, and I see that little girl in my, in my mind. So when I talk about new things, new things are not new to me until they're new. <laughs> okay. I've seen some things. Anybody seen some things? Well, I, I, you trust me, even though we've all seen a lot, but we hadn't seen it all. There's so much more in store, and we're the generation that's going to get to see it, praise God. In fact, we're the generation that God's going to use to make it happen. Hallelujah. Come on, give him your breast shout tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 I just, I just heard in my spirit that there's some uh, uh, people that have had some... Uh, uh, Problems with their ears, uh, uh, an eardrum that was uh, damaged from, from, from whatever I don't know. So it seemed like to me being around loud noises growing up. And uh, I just heard the Lord say, I'm healing that right now. <laughs> if that's you, raise your hand and say, I receive it, praise God. Amen. Amen. I receive it. Hallelujah. 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 I said, hallelujah, praise God. Amen. Believe the for, uh, behold, the former things are come to pass, and new things do I declare, and before they spring forth. I love that phrase, spring forth. I remember when I was a kid, and this will age me, I'm 77. When I was a kid in grade school, they came out with a ballpoint pen. You mean, you'd never seen a ballpoint pen? Not until that day. And of course, being mechanically minded as I was, when they gave me one, first thing I'd do is unscrew it and see what makes, you know, I'm pushing that thing there. I won't know why it works, you know. So I unscrewed it, and they had a little spring in there, and that little spring popped out of there and went in the floor somewhere, and I never could find it. And every time I read that scripture, that's what I think. And before it springs forth, that says to me, it could catch you off guard. If you're not in the flow of the Spirit, it could catch you off guard. And I like to say this, if you're in the flow, then you'll be in the know, hallelujah. Amen. 
So don't let this new thing that God's doing catch you off guard. Don't be the last one to hear about it. I told Carolyn when I first started studying the Word, uh, uh, I, I, I was shocked. I'm serious. I did not know Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John told the same story. I went in there where Carolyn was. I came out of that bedroom where I studied. I said, Carolyn, did you know Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John wrote the same story? She said, is that all you've learned today? And she, she laid her hand right on my forehead and said, get on back in there. God's going to teach you something. You know? I, I thought it was a great revelation. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John wrote the same story. But then I noticed that there were certain of the disciples that I called them insiders. There were some that seemed to be around Jesus more than the others. They saw things before the others. And, and immediately I said, I went in there and I said, Carolyn, I want to be an insider. I want to be an insider. I want to be one of those people that when Jesus is about to do something, he lets me in on it. Amen. Is that a selfish question or a selfish desire? No, it's not. Because he said when the spirit of truth has come, he will show you things to come. And if you're in the flow, then you're going to know about them. They won't catch you off guard. Hallelujah. Praise God. So we have reached another, another moment in time on God's timetable that new things are breaking loose in the earth. New things. Every October, I set time aside to, to seek the Lord and just, just ask Him, what's on your agenda for the next coming year? And He's been very faithful to share things with me, and then that's what I take to the body of Christ everywhere I go. And I don't change that theme until the next year. And so in uh, October of 2023... Ask the Lord, what's on your agenda? What can we expect? What's coming? And, you know, sometimes I get it in a few minutes. Sometimes it may be later in the day. Sometimes it may be two or three days later. But I don't leave that place of prayer, my, my personal place of prayer, when I'm seeking the Lord uh, in these matters. And I don't leave until I, I receive it. And... Uh, he said to me, right up, I mean, I hadn't been in there in an hour. And he said, you tell the people everywhere you go in 2024 to do these three things, and then I'll tell you what will be the result of them. He said, tell them that it is vitally important. Number one, that they stay in faith. Number two, that they remain focused on the promises of God. And then number three, refuse to be distracted by anything that is happening in the world around you. I'll say them again in case you're writing them down. Number one, stay in faith. Number two, remain focused on the promises of God. And then number three, refuse to allow anything that is happening in the world around you to distract you. That's one of Satan's greatest weapons is distraction. Jesus said in the parable, the sower sows the word. Once the word is sown, Satan comes immediately to steal it. And in the Amplified, it lists different ways that he uses to steal the Word. And one of them is the distractions of the ages. The distractions of the age. Amen. So make a firm commitment that as you have entered into 2024, we're still at the beginning stages of it, but make a firm commitment tonight if you haven't already. Number one, stay in faith. Look at your neighbor and say, stay in, faith. stay in faith. Number two, remain focused on the promises of God. Tell somebody, remain focused, remain focused on the promises of God. Number three, refuse to allow anything that is happening in the world to distract you. Tell somebody that. Refuse to allow anything that is happening in the world to distract you. He said, now if they will do that, tell them this is what they can expect. Number one, progression. Number two, advancement. Number three, promotion. Number four, their highest expectations will be fulfilled. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Amen. If you will stay in faith 
remain focused on the promises of God, don't allow anything in the world to distract you, then you're 2024. When, you, when we come back, when we reach the end of this year, and you look back on 2024, you're going to see, because God confirms the word with signs following, you're going to see it was a year of promotion, a year of progression, and a year of advancement. And if you'll check it out, your highest expectations will have been fulfilled. Hallelujah. Amen. And it's already happening to you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Somebody lift your hands and say, Lord, I'm a candidate for progression, advancement, promotion. I'm a candidate to have all my highest expectations fulfilled. And because I believe I receive it, I'm going to go ahead and give you a shout in advance. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord your best shout. Praise God. Hallelujah. Say this with me. My God is the God of new things. Say it again. My God is the God of new things. Now, I've experienced, like I said, I'm in my 55th year of ministry. I've experienced all of my Christian life. Progression. Advancement, promotion. But there are levels that I haven't reached yet. There's always another level. And let me relate a story to you, and, and I may have shared it here before, but it's, it's, it keeps coming up in my thinking, and, and uh, just to give you an illustration. In 1974, I was preaching in Torrance, California. This is where uh, Ed Dufresne lived at that time. And uh, he was still married to his first wife, Carolyn. And I was preaching in Torrance. Not Ed started the church a little later there. I was preaching with a full gospel businessman. And there was a businessman in the meeting who came up to me after the service. Excuse me, I need another drink of water. He come up to me after the service and said, uh, Brother Jerry, uh, how long are you going to be in town? I said, well, I have tomorrow off, but I have to go uh, to another city nearby and preach on Sunday. And he said, could my wife and I take you and your family to lunch tomorrow? I said, well, yes, sir, I'd, I'd, we'd be happy to do that. And it's the first time I ever met him. And so he said, uh, asked me what hotel I was in. I told him. And he said, my wife will come and pick up your wife and daughters. We have two daughters as well. And, and then I will be right behind them shortly. And I'll pick you up and take you to a restaurant that we want you to uh, introduce you to in Newport Beach. And so uh, my wife and I and my two girls were standing out in front of the hotel this big, beautiful white Mercedes come pulling around, and I recognized his wife driving it. So she got out of the car and told my wife and my daughters to come get in the car with her. She said, Brother Jerry, my husband will be here in just a few moments to pick you up. So they, they went on to the restaurant. In a little while, here come a 1927 Silver Ghost Rolls Royce. And this man is driving it. Now, prior to me going into the ministry, I restored classic cars, but I'd never restored a Rolls Royce. This one was immaculate. Now, this is 1974, and at that time, it was worth a quarter of a million dollars. Okay? So he pulls up there in this beautiful Roadster Rolls Royce. And he said, Brother Jerry, hop in. So I walked up there and opened the door and sat down next to him, and we took off riding around in a 1927 Rolls Royce Roadster, pearl white, beautiful. And on the way to Newport Beach, on the freeway, he pointed out on both sides of the freeway, I just sold this building, great big office complex. I just bought this property. I'm developing this property. I own that property. I mean, it looked like he owned everything down the freeway. This is an extremely wealthy man. And so we get to Newport Beach, 
and uh, uh, this fancy restaurant out on the water, and they came by with their menus. Now, I'm a country boy. I was born in Mississippi. <laughs> when you're born in Mississippi, it's two syllables, Mississippi. Okay. <laughs> I was born on a farm in Mississippi that my grandfather bought in 1927. It's where my dad was raised. It's where I was born. And we were in the sticks. I mean, we, we had a dirt road to our property. There was only uh, three or four white families on the, on, the, on the road. The rest were black families. And, uh, uh, you know, I mean, I, I, I lived in the country. I'm a country boy. And then eventually my father moved us to Shreveport, Louisiana. And eventually we moved into a place where Carolyn's folks had already lived, where we had some property. And I had horses and, and uh, you know, and being raised on the farm, uh, my grandmother had chickens and roosters and all that. And I went up and down the road selling eggs. So uh, when we got to Shreveport, this place where I had enough room, I had a horse. I had a couple of cows, and I had chickens and a rooster, and I rode my horse down the road selling lay, fresh eggs, okay? So now I'm sitting in a 1927 Rolls Royce. I felt like Gomer Powell. And I was trying to be just as sophisticated as I could be, you know, but sometimes the country comes out, you can't help it. And I almost said, golly, shazam, you know. <laughs> and I, I'd never been around this kind of, you know, wealth. And we got to that restaurant and they laid this menu before us. I didn't know anything that was on there. And his wife said, would you like for me to order for us all? And I said, oh, yes, ma'am, please. You know, she didn't know I couldn't read. I didn't know what any of it meant, you know. S cargo? What is that? I didn't know what it was. Glad I didn't, and I'm glad she didn't order it. <laughs> and so I'd never heard of these things. Time out, let me go to another story. <laughs> the first time that I started traveling with Brother Copeland, one of our first meetings was in Kansas City. Full Gospel Bit has been regional convention. And uh, the, the president of the chapter there wanted to take Brother Copeland and Gloria and myself to dinner that night after the meeting to a famous steakhouse there in Kansas City. So we're sitting at the table there, and he orders a, you know, a T-bone, and Brother Copeland orders a New York strip, and Gloria orders a, you know, filet. And when it comes to me... I ordered a hamburger steak with grilled onions and gravy. <laughs> Brother Copeland said, that's not a steak. I said, it was in my house. <laughs> I'd never eaten anything like that. T-bone? I didn't know what a T-bone was. I, didn't, I don't know what a New York strip is. We had hamburger steaks with grilled onions and gravy. You know, that's it. And we thought when we had that, as we say in the South, we were in high cotton. <laughs> yeah, amen. <laughs> Amen. So back to the Newport Beach, and we're eating things I'd never eaten before. <clears throat> so we get ready to leave, and he says, uh, could I take you to my office, to my office complex? Sure. So we all go there, and we, this office building is magnificent. I mean, it's right off of the 405. And uh, so we walk in there and walk into this beautiful lobby, and then we walk to the back of it, these huge doors, and he opens these doors, and it's his personal office. Everything in there was imported from Italy. i would never seen anything like it in my life. And so he said, sit down, and we sat in front of his desk. He sat behind the desk, and uh, so he's, he's sharing with me that his father was a minister, uh, a Pentecostal minister, and that he got saved uh, this man got saved when he was a young boy, and he said, and Dad thought I was going to be in the ministry, but I knew at a young age that God was going to bless me in business so I could be, and he called it, a minister of finance. Yeah. And he told me, he said, now I'm a partner with Brother Hagen, and I'm a partner with Oral Roberts, and, he, and he's given me his testimony. 
And then he took us back to the hotel. And so when I got back to the hotel, I said, Lord, what was that all about? And he said this. He said, son, I wanted to show you that no matter what level you attain to, there's always another level. There's always another level. Amen. No matter how blessed you might be right now, there's another level. I said, there's another level. Amen. And I believe what God is saying to us is, by progression, advancement, promotion, that He's ready to take us to that next level. And because the time is short, I believe there is a spirit of acceleration. I think I preached about that the last time I was here. There's a spirit of acceleration taking place right now. What, what's used to take 20 years is going to get done in a year. And even sooner, hallelujah. God is ready to take you into the new thing. And even though you may have already experienced some levels of promotion and progression and advancement, God is ready to take you to a level you have never been to. The Bible says, I have not seen, ear hath not heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those that love Him. Anybody, anybody in here love God? Well, look at your neighbor and say, then I'm a candidate, praise God. And go ahead and give Him another shout in advance. Amen. Now, in this verse, Isaiah 42, 9, in this verse, God is declaring the things that will happen before they happen. The things that will happen before they happen. Now, in chapter 43, in verse 19, just turn over there another chapter. He asks a question. Verse 19. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. He's repeating what he said in chapter 42. But this time he says, shall you not know it? Shall you not know it? Shall you not know it? In other words, will you be a candidate because you're in the no, and because you're in the no, you're in the flow? Shall you not know it? The Amplified Bible says, do you not perceive it? And will you not give heed to it? You see, you can hear me talk about it tonight, but I can't make you give heed to it. Amen. I, I can tell you all I've learned about it with, with, that the Lord's given me so far about it. And every time I preach on it, He keeps adding to it. In fact, uh, these are right, these are fresh notes I wrote down this afternoon. Hadn't even been typed up by my secretary yet. Once I preach them, I take them back home. She types them up. But these, these are things I've just received from the Lord this afternoon. And, and uh, it, it's, I don't want to imply that it's not similar to what I've already been preaching since October 23 about progression and so forth. It is, but a different slant. Brother Hagin used to say, we're going to climb this mountain from every direction. You know, that's what we're doing tonight. Okay. And so uh, the Amplified says, do you not perceive it? And will you not give heed to it? So you can hear it and maybe even get excited about it in here and walk right out of this building and forget it. That means you didn't give heed to it. Now, perceive, I wrote these definitions down. Uh, from what I think they mean, and I believe I'm very close to a dictionary meeting, perceive means have knowledge of and become affected by it. To have knowledge of something that God is saying and then to be affected by it. And then the phrase, give heed to it, I wrote down as my definition, watch for it, expect it, and receive it by faith. That's how you give heed to what God is saying. Watch for it, expect it, and receive it by faith. And then going back to chapter 42, God says, for those who are not watching for it, and those who are not expecting it, and those who are not receiving it by faith, 
then it will be, as he said in verse 22 of chapter 42, look at it. These are a people robbed and spoiled. That means if you don't give heed to it, if you don't receive it by faith, then it's highly improbable that you will enjoy it, and it is very probable you'll get robbed of it. Amen? I don't, I don't want it happening to everybody else but me, and that's not selfish. I, I want it happening to me. Because when it happens to me and I go around the world telling people about it, it inspires their faith. Amen. And, and many of these things are already happening to me. In fact, uh, once I receive uh, the prophetic word that I'm to take to the rest of the world every year, after I receive it, one of the first things I do is I say, Lord, if you don't mind, I'd like for you to confirm this in my life immediately so that when I take it to the rest of the world, it gives validity to the message. And, and he's done it. He's, he's been, been doing it. Hey, your pastor's already experiencing it. God's no respecter of persons. If he'd do it for him, why wouldn't he do it for you? But there may be something he's doing that you're not doing. Maybe he was watching for it. He was. Maybe he was expecting it. He was. Maybe he received it by faith before it ever happened. He did. And zow we, look what the Lord has done. Give the Lord another shout, praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. So don't be, don't be one of those that when God's doing this new thing, you're robbed or spoiled of it, or it's, it's, it's Satan's prevented you from experiencing it. Don't be one of those people. Amen. The message translation asks this question. Is anyone out there listening? Is anyone out there listening? Is anyone paying attention to what's coming? I'll ask the same question. Anybody listening tonight? Is anybody paying attention to what's coming? Hallelujah. Well, be that way when you walk out of here tonight. Be that way next week this time. Be that way next month this time. Don't just walk out here and say, wasn't that a good little sermon that little preacher gave us and forget it? No. Say, I, I give heed to what he just said. I, I perceive that God's going to do it for me, praise God. I'm mixing my faith with it. I'm watching for it. I'm expecting it. And praise God, I believe I'll just go ahead and shout over it. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't wait to have church when I come to church. I have church at home all by myself. Hallelujah. And sometimes when I get so excited over what God's doing, my Cherokee bloodline comes out. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> I, look like a, I, I look like a Cherokee running up and down. And I've got a full headdress Cherokee bonnet, and I put it on sometime up there in my prayer closet, and I just, well, hey, hey. <laughs> Carolyn said, you're a nut, boy. I said, I'm a nut that's blessed. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Now, I don't wait to come in here and get excited. I stay excited. Hallelujah. Amen. So how many of you truly want God's best in 2024? Say, I'm a candidate for progression, advancement, promotion, and I'm expecting my highest expectations to be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Amen? Now, this is God's plan, but we have a part to play. Number one, become aware of what He plans to do. Number two, watch, watch for it. Number three, expect it. And then number four, receive it by faith. Amen. Number one, become aware of it. That's what I'm endeavoring to do for you tonight, to become aware. Now, I realize some of you, 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 you you're, you're already sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Some of this that I'm saying is not new to you. You're hearing it yourself. I, I'm amazed every year when Brother Copeland begins preaching on what the Lord gave him for the new year and, and what the Lord gave me. It's not the same words, but it's the same theme. Amen. 
He, he said, the Lord told him, 2024, the year for more and more and more. Yeah. Well, that sounds like progression, advancement. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So we're always on the same page. Now, listen to this. God's not only talking to Israel, but He's talking to us as well. He's the God of creation. He's the God that made everything that's in creation, in the earth. He's the God who gives breath to everyone in the earth. He's, he's the God. Uh, he was their God, and He's our God, and we are His people. So what He meant for them is good for us as well because He's still the God of new things. Nothing's changed about that. And He's ready to release in the earth and in our lives something new that we've never experienced before. My question is, will you receive it? Amen. Now, I want you to uh, look at, uh, let's see got so many things here. Let me make sure I'm staying in the flow here. Now, let me make this statement to you before I ask you to go to another scripture. I, I read an, in an article here recently, it said this, God does not merely tell what will happen in the future. He directs the future and he tells the future what to do. I love that. God does not merely tell what will happen in the future. He directs the future, and He tells the future what to do. Now, I wrote this down this afternoon. My future is bright based on what I just talked about in Isaiah 42. My future is bright. I don't need to know how God can make this happen for me. I find comfort in knowing that He can and He will. See, uh, people, people uh, get into unbelief by asking, well, how is God going to do that for me? Who am I? Well, you're a child of God, aren't you? You qualify. Amen. I don't ask God, how are you going to do this? My responsibility is to believe that He can and believe that He will. Amen. And I take comfort in that. Uh, if I go around asking God, how are you going to do this? You know, there's a, there's a lot of major things I'm believing for this year. We're building an entire new church campus. We pay cash for everything we do. And, and in the natural, you know, where is all that cash going to come from? Yeah, but I have a, I, no, well, I'll say this. God has a track record with me. He's never let me down. He never failed me. I've been believing to pay cash. For I don't know how many years. And he's, and he's honored that. And, 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 and we don't have debt. In our ministry, personally, in my offices around the world, there's no debt. Amen. And, and yet, we're, we're embarking on some of the biggest things we've ever done. And it's going to take more money than we've ever believed, God, believed him for. And I don't go around asking, how is he going to do it? Where is he going to come from? Who is he going to use? See, all that does is, is, is cause you to get in wonderment, and then the next thing that happens is doubt and unbelief. And then you start thinking, impossible. You know, we're, we're, we're ready to take our aviation department to another level. Aviation wrote the book on expensive. Go look, go look in your dictionary for the word expensive, and it might have out the side aviation. Is that right, Brad? And we, we, have, we have two wonderful airplanes in our fleet, and, and one of them takes me internationally. The other one's on the shorter trips, and both my daughters are in ministry, and we allow them to use them from time to time. And Richard Roberts, every once in a while... He'll call and say, is your airplane available? One of your airplanes available? Said, sure. And, and so, uh, but there's always another level. Amen. And this is my 10th debt-free airplane in 55 years. And, and you think you could just sit down and relax 
get in a comfort zone. But no. Why? Because it's impossible to please God without faith. Gloria Copeland said many times in the past, if, if, if anything God ever told Kenneth and I to do was possible, it wouldn't have required faith. Everything God's ever told us to do was impossible. Why? Because it requires faith. Why? It's impossible to please God without faith. I, I'm never, I've never reached a place in 55 years where I can take my shield of faith off and put it in the closet and not have to use it again for at least six months. I'm, I'm exercising my faith 24-7 on something. Amen. So we got some big things, big, big expectations for 2024, even though some have already come to pass, some we're in the process of receiving the manifestation of them. Amen. So it's time to upgrade our aviation department. It's time to build a whole new campus. We've got three buildings built, and now we're, we're starting, getting ready to start the, the new auditorium. Uh, I, I'm on the uh, I'm one of the founding members of the Metal Ark Lemon uh, Legacy Foundation Board. Metal Ark Lemon was one of my spiritual sons, and when when uh, he passed away, went home to be with the Lord. Uh, his wife asked me to serve on the board, and uh, we are going to build on our campus the very first Metal Ark Lemon Legacy Gymnasium. <laughs> Hallelujah! Not only that, but uh, when I went to do Metal Ark's home going. Uh, the Globetrotters came and played a special game in his honor. And some of them promised me that when I get this built, they will come and dedicate it for me and play a game in there. Hallelujah. Amen. So I'm believing God for some big things. Amen. But I never asked, how are you going to do it? Where's it going to come from? Who are you going to use? No, I take comfort in knowing that he can and he will. And up to now, he's never let me down. And I don't think he's beginning to, will, will ever let me down. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, Isaiah 46, look at verse 11. Isaiah 46. Thus says, verse 11, thus saith the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, and his maker, ask me of things to come concerning my sons and concerning the works of my hand. Command ye me. Now, the first time I read that, the Lord said, when are you going to do it? I said, Lord, that's not likely to happen. I said, you can command me to do anything, but I have a problem with me commanding you to do anything. He said, I wouldn't have invited you to do it. I wouldn't invite you to do it if I didn't say it in my word. Amen. I said, well, I'm glad you showed me that, but it's not likely I'll be commanding you to do anything. And then one day, uh, I was building a medical facility in the nation of Kenya. And I was believing God to pay cash for it. And phase one was an outpatient clinic. And uh, eventually we were going to build a, a, a center that I was going to turn over to the nation, give to the nation, and provide uh, uh, a medical facility for an area that had two million people without any medical facilities, and in, provide internship for students in the University of Nairobi that wanted to go into medicine. And uh, so I was going to go to the president of the nation, at that time was Daniel Moy, and ask him to give me the land to do this on. And I had the architectural drawings with me, and uh, Brother Roberts found out I was going, and he was believing at that time to get his medical graduates uh, that felt a call to missions to get them on the mission field. And he said, I would like to use your medical facility as a prototype, and I want to send some of my graduates who graduated out of the School of Medicine to there, and, and they be employed in your facility. And I said, well, that'd be wonderful. I mean, I mean, what a, what a great blessing that'd be. And so he said, uh, well, when are you going? 
And I said, well, I'm going in about two weeks, and I'm, I got a meeting scheduled with the president to ask him for the land to do this on. And he said, well, I'd like to go with you. I said, well, Brother Roberts, I wish I'd have known that. I said, uh, my schedule is so full once I get there, I wouldn't have any time to spend with you. He said, well, would you at least pray and ask God if he'd be all right? I thought, well, who am I to tell old Roberts no, you know? I said, well, if you really want to go, yes, yes, come on. And so uh, we, we, he, come, he and Evelyn come, stay at our home. Then my wife and Evelyn take Brother Roberts and I to the airport, DFW. And our first leg is to go to uh, JFK, and then catch a flight from JFK to London, then from London to Nairobi. And uh, so when we, on the way over there, I'm showing Brother Roberts my architectural drawings for phase one. And, uh, and I said, now, Brother Roberts, when we get to Nairobi, uh, I will arrange for my director there to get you a room, and you can rest while I go meet with the president. And then as soon as I get back from that meeting, I've chartered an airplane, and we're going to fly to Kakamega, where I start an open-air crusade tonight. And in the morning, I have, I have uh, pastor's seminars. That afternoon, I'm dedicating churches we built, and I'm breaking ground for new churches. And then that night, I'm back in an open-air crusade, and that's my schedule for the next two weeks. I said, but I'll see to it. If, if you want to if you want to go on any of that, fine. If not, I'll have somebody uh, assigned to you to take care of you, and I'll, I'll come back and have lunch with you or dinner with you or whatever. And I said, so when we get to Nairobi, first thing I got to do is go to the State House, which is equivalent to the White House, and meet with President Moy. What would you like to do? He said, I want to go with you. I said, okay, sure. He said, I want to go with you. And so... Uh, we go there, and that's another story I won't get into, but then we get on the plane that I've chartered to fly us to Cuckamega. And when we get to Cuckamega, we get in the hotel we're staying in. Uh, I said, now, Brother Roberts, like I said, uh, I've got an open-air crusade I start tonight, so I'm going to go and shower and, and get prepared to go to that meeting. And, and you, why don't you stay here and rest tonight? And I'll have somebody that'll be outside your door if anything you need. Uh, you just let them know. And so uh, before I walked out of the room, he said, Now, whose trip is this, mine or yours? I said, It's mine. He said, Then I'm your guest. I said, Yes, sir, you are. He said, And I, I asked to come on this trip. I said, Yes, sir, you did. He said, you didn't invite me, I invited myself, and you agreed. I said, yes, sir, that's right. He said, them. That means I'm here to serve you. And anything you want me to do while I'm here, you command me to do it. I said, Brother Roberts, I have a serious problem with me commanding you to do anything. <laughs> I said, my mama would whip me. My daddy would whip me if I commanded an elder to do anything. He said, who's in charge here, me or you? I said, well, I was. <laughs> he said, then, you still are. And anything you want me to do, just command me to do it. I said, well, Brother Roberts, thank you, but that's not likely to happen. But thank you anyway. So I went on about my business. And then about two days into this, I learned that most of my pastors that I supported and helped build churches for, they all got saved in Oral Roberts' meeting in Nairobi in 1969. They had no idea. I hadn't mentioned that Oral Roberts was with me. He's still back at the hotel. And when I found that out, I went back to the hotel, and the next morning I knocked on his door, take him down to breakfast, and then we went back to his room, and I said, Brother Roberts, I feel a command coming on. <laughs> he said, what do you want me to do? I said, I command, I told him, I said, all of my pastors, they got saved in your meeting in 1969 in Nairobi. He had over 100,000 people in an open air meeting in 1969 in Nairobi. And all these pastors I've been working with all these years, they all got saved in his meeting. And I didn't know that. 
And I said, I command you to come and speak to my pastors. He said, let me get my Bible. Let me grab my hat and we will go. And they still don't know Oral Roberts even in the country. So we slipped in behind the church and I said, now you just sit in this room and then at some point I'm going to ask you to come out and they're going to be surprised that Oral Roberts is here. So I went through some preliminaries and then I said, now I have a treat for you today. I said, most of you, well, none of you knew that this person came with me except my directors here. And I said, and many of you, uh, I've been told you got saved in his meeting in 1969. Would you welcome my dear friend and mentor, Dr. Oral Roberts? Oh, the place went wild. <laughs> Brother Roberts comes out and he says to me as he's going to the pulpit, now Jerry, he just turned 70 years old. And he said, now Jerry, I can't preach as long as I used to. And he said, uh, and I'd ask him when he got through, lay hands on them. And he said, now, I'll preach for as long as I can, probably 15 minutes or so, and if you'll have a stool there or a chair that I can sit in, I'll lay hands on them as they pass me by, okay? And so I turned it to him. He preached, and he preached, and he preached, <laughs> and he preached. I finally got up and said, I command you to stop. <laughs> He said, okay. I said, lay your hands on them. I got to go dedicate these new churches. He laid hands on them. And that day, I got a revelation of what it means to command God. It's not, it's not you in a rude way or egotistical way. It's more like reminding God of what He promised. Not that he's forgotten it, but he likes for us, he likes to hear it come out of our mouth. So be my word that comes out of my mouth, it will not return unto me, boy. How does it return to him? Out of our mouth. Amen. Now, let's, let's look at, uh, that was 45.11, let's look at 46.11. The latter part of that verse says, I have spoken it, I will also bring it to pass. I have purposed it, I will also do it. Yes. Now there's your confidence right there. Yes. There's your confidence right there. God says, I have spoken this. What has He spoken to us tonight? Yes. Progression, yes. advancement, yes. promotion. Yes. Our highest expectation will be fulfilled if we stay in faith, yes. if we remain focused on the promises of God. If we refuse to allow anything in the world to distract us, then God is saying to us, I have spoken it. I will also bring it to pass. I have purposed it. I will do it. Somebody shout, it's as good as done. Hallelujah. Say it again. It's as good as done. Hallelujah. And go ahead and give him your absolute best shout. Amen. The message translation says, I've said it, and I most certainly will do it. Yeah. Hallelujah. So that's why I say, I don't have to know how he's going to do it. I take comfort in knowing that he said it, and he will do it. Amen. Hallelujah. As far as I'm concerned, that settles it. And I'm on my way for promotion, advancement. Amen. Amen. Progression and my highest expectations being fulfilled. Now, let me wrap it up with this. Don't ever accuse me of ever getting through. I don't ever get through. I just have to stop somewhere. <laughs> I hadn't even finished these new notes yet. I hadn't got to the old ones yet. I promise you, when I get through tonight, it'll still be dark. That's as far as I'm going with that, okay? No, I'm wrapping it up right now. Now, let me, let me close it with this. I know you're all familiar with this. Psalm 115, go there with me. Psalm 115, verse 14 and 15.
Actually, let's start in verse 12 and go all the way down to 15. The Lord hath been mindful of us. He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. In other words, He blesses covenant people. He will bless them that fear the Lord, both small and great. That includes others other than just fivefold ministry. Okay? This doesn't just work for preachers. The Lord shall increase you more and more, you and your children. You are blessed of the Lord, which made heaven and earth. The blessing of God on our lives is designed by God to bring increase to our lives. That's what the very word blessed is. Empowered to prosper, empowered to increase. Not just increase, but here it says increase more and more. I like to say this. I've experienced increase all these 55 years. And every year I experience more than the previous year. And now he's saying we are to increase more and more. Look at somebody and say, I'm ready for the more and more. One commentary that I read says this. Jehovah shall heap blessings on you. Jehovah shall heap blessings on you. And I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fanatic, a stickler we say back home. I'm a stickler for definitions. So what does it mean to heap? He will heap blessings on you. It means to pile on. It means to receive in great quantity. It means to add to until it rises beyond measure. Hallelujah. Don't you never say, I am ready for the blessings to be heaped on me. Amen. Another commentary adds this. The blessings bestowed on you descend down on you with continual increase. They, they descend down on you because every good and perfect gift comes from above. They descend down on you with continual increase. Still another commentary says, the blessings will have increased more and more to the extent that they will become extraordinary. The word extraordinary, beyond the norm, beyond the usual, and what most people would consider to be outrageous, exuberant, and even excessive. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Now, you know, I, I get criticized from time to time for having two airplanes. What's a preacher name with two airplanes? Well, follow me. You'll find out. I mean, if you spend 20 days out of every month somewhere around the world, and, and when one's in maintenance, the other one is available. Amen? We, we can't do what I'm called to do without them. So if you have a problem with it, it's because <laughs> I'm experiencing the blessings excessively. Hallelujah. Excessively. My wife said one time, Jerry, you don't need another motorcycle. I said, well, tell God. He's the one that keeps blessing me with him. <laughs> Amen. I said, I am not about to say, Lord, don't bless me with another motorcycle because Carolyn don't like it. <laughs> and then one day she was getting ready to preach in a meeting we were doing, and she come up on a scripture about... Uh, in, in the book of Ephesians about uh, excessive and so forth. Yeah. And, and she said, her definition of it was, you can have more than one. I said, I rest my case. I could have been a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Well, what do you do with one motorcycle? You only one ride one at a time. The other one's for sewing. Yeah. I ride them and I sew them. I sew them and I ride them. Carolyn come home one time and she walked. I was out in my shop and she said, where's your motorcycle? Where's your classic cars? I said, I gave them all away while you were gone. She was up preaching with Lynn Hammond in, in Minneapolis. She said, why did you give your motorcycles and your cars away? I said, I just wanted to show God he's still number one. 
that none of this means anything to me other than the fact that he blessed me with it. I said, Lord, if you want me to bless somebody else with it, tell me who and I'll have it, I'll have it given to them before dark. I cleaned out my shop. I cleaned out my motorcycles. Gave them all away. Now, she says when she really is serious, she don't call me honey, sweetheart, Jerry. It's Jerry Savelle. And she grabs me right here. Look at me. See, I was born with this dimple, but it got deeper since I married Carolyn. <laughs> okay. That's where she grabs me to make sure she has my undivided attention. Okay. Jerry Savelle, don't you ever give another motorcycle away. Don't you ever give another classic car away. I said, why not? She said, they come back to you in fleets. We have to build a bigger garage. And she was right. I don't have a garage anymore. I have a museum. <laughs> I have a museum. And don't get mad at me. If, you got, if you're going to get mad at somebody, get mad at God, because I'm just living what he said. Excessive blessings. Extraordinary blessings. Hallelujah. Glory. Come on, give the Lord another shout. Hallelujah. Have you ever read Deuteronomy chapter 6? He said, you will build houses. That's plural. That means you can have more than one house. Okay, lost half my crowd. No, I didn't. This is a faith church. I didn't lose anybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me read that again. The blessings will have increased in your life more and more to the extent that they will become extraordinary and extraordinary meaning beyond the norm, beyond the usual, and what most people would consider to be outrageous, exuberant, and excessive. Hallelujah. Well, just tell them, if you knew the God I served, you'd be experiencing it too. Hallelujah. Amen. And then one last commentary made this statement. God will do this for you despite all the attempts of your adversary to prevent it from happening. I love that. He'll do this for you despite all of the attempts of the adversary to prevent it from happening. I told the people in a meeting here recently, when the devil tells you, this will never happen to you. You will never experience what he preached to you tonight. You just turn to the devil and say, you said what? And then just laugh. <laughs> you said what? And just laugh. Brother Hagin used to have laughing services. Remember those? Oh, man. And he'd, some, he'd start out and say, ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. And some of them I was in, you know, that's about as deep as I got, ha, ha. But you can't, you can't keep saying ha, ha until he gets on you and ha, ha, ha. And the next thing you know, he's running around the building, praise God. <laughs> Brother Copeland tells this publicly. I wouldn't say it if he hadn't said it many times publicly. But, but uh, I was uh, in Little Rock, Arkansas, and uh, uh, Happy Caldwell, my friend Happy Caldwell, I didn't know it. He asked me to come and preach, but he was, he was honoring me for 35 years in the ministry, which was quite a, about 20 years ago. And he invited all these preachers to come. Brother Hagin's there, Brother Copeland's there. I mean, the, the who's who in the faith okay. camp was there. And I didn't know that he'd arranged for this. And so uh, they were honoring me and blessing me and everything, and they spoke and said kind words. And then uh, Happy said, well, Jerry, you came to preach. You still want to preach? I said, yes, I still want to preach. And so I was preaching from, I, I was, I, my theme was, stir yourself up. <laughs> and the verse that said, there's none that stirreth up himself and calleth upon thee. And Brother Copeland and Glory was sitting out there, and Brother Copeland just come out of a series of meetings. And he said later to me, that later that night, he said, if it hadn't been for you, I wouldn't have come. He said, I was so tired. He said, all I want to do is go home and go to bed and not have to do anything for a few days. Just rest. I just come out of this meeting. 
He said, but when I, when I heard it was celebrating for you, then I had to be there. He said, and when we checked in the hotel, I laid down there for a little while, and Gloria said, it's time to get up and get dressed. And we come over here, and I was dragging. And then you start preaching, stir yourself up. <laughs> Were you in that meeting? Yeah, Philip. And uh, I said, and I kept saying it over. It, it, God's not going to stir you up. There's anybody going to stir you up. You have to do it yourself. I said, all I can do is preach, but you'll have to do the stirring up. Hopefully I can, I can inspire you to stir yourself up. And I kept saying that. And then I'd stop and say, uh, stand up and shout, I'm stirred. <laughs> Brother Coleman got said, I'm stirred. <laughs> I said, say it again, I'm stirred. He said, stirred that night for me was the furthest thing in my life at that moment. I was worn out. And you kept saying it. <laughs> Say, I'm stirred. Say, I'm stirred. Say, I'm stirred. And he said, the more I said it, next thing I know. And then I heard him. And he, he, he did this. Woo! I'm stirred up tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. So that's the way Brother Hagin used to do with when they started laughing in the services. You know. And, and if you can't do anything, but just ha ha on you, devil. Next thing you know, man, you can't stop laughing. <laughs> I was in Toronto one night, and, and the Lord said, Tonight, uh, you're gonna, they're going to be carrying people out of there that get so, uh, get so uh, uh, full of the Holy Spirit through laughter. Yeah. Be, get so full of joy through laughter. Yeah. And that service went that direction, man. It's, it's, Joy of the Lord hit that place. People started laughing, falling in the floor. And, and, and I said, and some of you will have to be carried to your car because you can't even find your way to the car. <laughs> some of you may not even be able to leave the parking lot tonight because you can't drive because you're so, you're so under the influence of the spirit of joy. <laughs> Little did I know, they, I was the first one they'd carry out of the meeting. <laughs> And when I came to, I was in bed in a, in a hotel, and I don't even know how I got there. <laughs> One night uh, in Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, Brother Copeland had asked myself and Oral Roberts to speak in this meeting. And I spoke this, this particular night, and boy, the presence of God was so strong in there, it knocked me out on the platform. I mean, I, I, just, it, I, I just fell out under the power of the Holy Spirit. And Brother Copeland came and took over and finished the service. And when I came to, I'm laying on a sofa in the speaker's room at the Coliseum in, in Charlotte, North Carolina. And when I came to, I looked, and down at the end of the sofa, Oral Roberts had my shoes off massaging my feet. <laughs> I said, Brother Roberts, what are you doing? He said, when the anointing comes on me like that, sometimes I can't stand up and I have somebody massage my feet. He said, I saw that on you. I said, uh, Brother Roberts. <laughs> I, 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 was, I was embarrassed that Oral Roberts is massaging my feet. And then I thought, I hope I didn't have a hole in my sock. <laughs> Amen. Hey, did you notice when you're laughing, you're not thinking about your problems anymore? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. God will do this. What? Promotion. Acceleration. Uh, progressiveness. Advancement. Highest expectation fulfilled. Despite all the attempts of your adversary to prevent it from happening to you. Hallelujah. Come on, stand and give the Lord another good shout. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <coughs> Praise God forevermore. Amen. Are you glad you came tonight? I am. Boy, I was, I was fired up before I got here, but I'm at another level. Hallelujah. Okay. Okay, Tommy. My surrogate runner is not with me tonight, Tony. I feel so I feel so good. I feel like running. Run for me, Tommy. <laughs> if you feel like
right, run and help yourself. Hallelujah. Go for it, praise God. Amen. <laughs> glory, glory, glory. All right, all right. Come on, let's give the Lord another great shout of praise. Amen. Thank you, Tommy. I feel better now. Praise God. All right. Uh, my instructions from the Lord this afternoon, after I got through preaching, is to pray for people who, and, and listen carefully to this, that are in great need. I'm not talking about, you know, you'd like for this to happen. In great need of a financial breakthrough. Hold your hand up. Okay. And, I, and I'm not doing it to embarrass anybody. This is what the Lord told me. The spirit of increase is on my life. I've had more financial breakthroughs than you can count. So hold your hand up there. Let me ask you this. If it wouldn't embarrass you, would you come to the front and let me lay my hands on you? Because there's, there's an anointing on my life to pray for people to experience financial breakthroughs. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I, I did this in uh, Mac Hammond's church a few years ago. And we had probably over 3,000, 3,500 people in there, and I laid hands on every one of them at the close of the service. And two weeks later, Mac called me. He said, one of the people you laid hands on has had one of the most phenomenal financial breakthroughs that I've ever heard about. He said he and his family are members of our church. He said they got saved here. They got filled with the Holy Spirit here. They've learned the word of faith under our ministry. And he said, he called me a few days ago and said, Brother Mac, can I have an appointment with you? He said, I want to give you a testimony of something that happened to me after Brother Jerry laid hands on me. And I'm not promising this to everybody in here. I'm just giving you a testimony of how God can do what looks to you and me the impossible. And so the man came to Brother Mac's office. And when he walked in, he had a check holding in front of him. He said, Brother Mac, this is the tithe from my financial breakthrough and my supernatural increase. And it was a check for $1.2 million. So that means he just had a $12 million breakthrough. I said, Mac, did he tell you anything about how it happened? He said, yes. He said, he was walking through the house one morning and he said the Lord reminded him of some stock that his father had given him before he died. And he said, and I had it checked out and the people that, that checked it out, they said, it's not worth the paper it was printed on. And so I just kept it up in the attic in a, in a box. And he said, that morning the Lord told me, go up in the attic and get that, those stocks out of that box and take them and find out what they're worth now. $12 million. Amen. And the first thing he did was bring his church the tithes. $1.2 million. So I asked Mac, I said, Mac, I don't want to know who it was. Would you black out his name and address and phone number if it's on the check and make a copy of that and send to me so that I can use it as a testimony? I said, not only that, I want, to, I want to frame it and put it in my personal study in my office. And I want to lay my hands on it from time to time because I'm believing that I and my family and people on our staff are going to get to the place where we can write $1.2 million checks. Anybody like to do that? Yes. Praise God. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Amen. So I'm not saying you're going to come across $12 million. But I am saying, 
The God we serve is the God of the breakthrough. And what you need is not impossible for Him. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Amen. So lift your hands up, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna lay my hands on him. I'm not gonna pray a, a, a special prayer individually. I may or may not have a, a, a word for you, but regardless, just when I lay hands on you, I want you to say out loud where I can hear it and where you can hear it, and the people around you can hear it. I receive that. Practice it. I receive that. Say it louder. I receive that. And then immediately begin to praise God for it, okay? So, Father, in the name of Jesus, in obedient to your command to me this afternoon, you said to pray for people who desperately need a financial breakthrough. And you, you specifically said to me, and I'm glad I'm obeyed, to lay my hands upon them when doing so. And I appreciate the fact that they were obedient, that it's not an embarrassment to them. And in Jesus' name, the reason you said that to me is because you want to do something about it. How many of you believe God wants to do something about it? I spoke it, he says, and I will do it. I purposed it, and I will bring it to pass in the name of Jesus. So, Father, I lay my hands on them, and all of you stretch your hands out toward them. I lay my hands upon them, and I pray for the God of the breakthrough to visit their house and bring financial breakthroughs and supernatural increase in the name of Jesus. I receive it. Yes, in Jesus' name. Thank you for it, Father. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for it, Father. 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 In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give the Lord a shout of praise. In Jesus' name. I receive it. Well, go ahead and receive it. I receive it. In Jesus. Glory to God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. The spirit of increase and the and the God of the breakthrough visiting your house. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you for it, Father. Thank you for it, Father. Thank you for it, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Come on, let's all give the Lord a good shout of praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we praise you, Father. We praise you, Father. We praise you, Father. We praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for confirming your word with signs following. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You purpose it and you will do it. And I thank you for it. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Give him another shout of praise. Give him another shout of praise. Hallelujah. Did I miss anybody? Thank you, Lord. Come on, let's continue to praise Him. Continue to praise Him. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Receive it. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. I bless you, Father, for honoring your word in their behalf. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord another shout. Thank you for it, Father. 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 In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, help me shout. Help me shout. Help me praise God. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Supernatural increase. Financial breakthrough. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know you know how to shout. Give the Lord a good shout. Give the Lord a good shout. Thank Him for it. Receive it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hey, hey, Pastor, look at all the great tide checks coming your way. <laughs> Hallelujah. In the name
name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Receive it. In the name of Jesus. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Receive it in the name of Jesus. Thank you for it, Father. Thank you for it, Father. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, let's praise Him. Let's praise Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, I have an announcement. I have an announcement. The God of the breakthrough is in the house. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name. In the name. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Woo! Receive it. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Receive it. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Receive it. <laughs> hey, how about a double portion? In the name of Jesus, receive it. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you ready? Receive it. Receive it. Oh, glory. Go ahead and receive it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Receive it, sir. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hey. Jesus. Father, I heard the Spirit of God say, tell them this. There are many of you in here right now. You're about to write the largest tithe check you've ever written. Hallelujah. Because the supernatural increase that is coming your way, you tithe on it and it'll never stop. Tithe on it and it'll never stop. Hallelujah. Continual. Continual. More and more. Hallelujah. Are you glad you came tonight? Come on, Pastor. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. It matters that you came to church tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Glory. Are you inspired? Is your faith edified, built up? Thank you, Jesus. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah. Somebody needs to dance one more time right there where you are. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, as you're seated, tell your neighbor, I got my breakthrough tonight. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
You know, sitting here receiving, you're receiving from all the men that spoke into his life. What an honor to have an anointing like this in the house. Praise God. Has so many experiences in God and impartations from so many people. Praise God. Hallelujah. One of those verses that he was reading, I think it was the one in uh, the 43rd chapter, I believe. And he said there, remember not the former things. How many of you know that means it's not going to be the way it was? You say, it's been good. He still said, don't, don't, that, what's coming, what's, what, what you're walking into is not going to be like what it, even if it was good, it's going to be better. Praise God. In fact, literally, that literally means it's going to be so good that it makes you forget. In other words, the new testimonies are so good you don't even tell the old ones anymore. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. I know the Lord spoke to me and said, don't let the experiences of the way things have flown, flowed in the past, create the expectation of how it's going to be now. You're in a new season. Hallelujah. Are you ready to give? We, we, we want to be a blessing to Dr. Seville tonight. If you're a guest here, you might a uh, visitor, you might not know how we do it. Let me just mention the fact that um, we write out the checks to the church, Spirit of Faith Family Church. But that's not because we take anything out of it. That's just to make it real simple. Rather than him going home with however many checks that, that come in or whatever, then we'll just compile it real quickly and we'll count it. And uh, we will compile it into one. And we never take anything out of the offer. No, no guest speaker has ever spoken behind this pulpit. And anything was taken out of their offering. In fact, probably 99 point some percent, all of it was we add to it. God. But um, so, but you can give by writing out checks to Spirit of Faith Family Church, and then that you can text to give. Uh, some of our congregation know this, and uh, you can do that tonight if you'd like. If you want to text that phone number, I believe there's some other ways. Okay, tonight it's just text to give. That's right. So, uh, but if you want to give and uh, and you want to do it electronically, then you can make it. You know, call that number or whatever, dial that number, and they'll give you all the information. Praise the Lord. And all of that will be, we'll be able to see that tonight, how much came in even through electronically. And we'll add all that to the check. Hallelujah. And if you're watching by live stream, how many of you know you ate a good meal tonight? And you got impartations tonight. I encourage you to sow. There's information there with the little chat. What's that thing down below? Is it called the chat room? <laughs> I don't know much about like all that, but uh, there's a little uh, chat message down there. You can get the information how you can give right there below if you're watching YouTube or Facebook or something like that. Praise the Lord. It's a new day. It's going to be different for us from now on. I'm telling you, there's some impartations made tonight. Not only into uh, our, our, through the anointing, but through the spirit of faith. Amen. The Word of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Everybody ready to give that wants to give. Hallelujah. We're givers around here. We delight. We, we enjoy doing this. We love doing this. And uh, I, believe a, I believe this ministry is worthy uh, of a high offering. Praise God. The Lord spoke to me and said that he was going to bring Dr. Seville into my life. And I just said, okay, Lord, you said you're going to do it. I'm just going to let you. I'm going to believe it. Don't, I, I don't mean I don't have a part, but I'm going to just receive it. And uh, let you do it. And sure enough, he's, he's brought that into our lives. And we thank God for it. So those are the, the men that we uh, honor with our seeds the most. Praise God. You ready to give? Let's pray. Father, thank you tonight for this great uh, message, the, the inspiration behind it, the faith that it imparted into our lives. We love you and thank you for sending Dr. Seville to our, to, our, uh, to our meeting tonight, to the church tonight. We're so grateful, Father, for what we received. And Father, we're people who love we're people who uh, are grateful. We, we're people that want to be a blessing. We're people who honor. And so we give out of those uh, flows tonight. But we're also people of faith. And we know that sowing, you never, uh, in your word, say that we just sow. It's not ever just sowing, but it's sowing and reaping. And tonight, we're, we're doing the first part of this equation. We're sowing our seed, and we're people of faith, believing that, like you said, what we sow, you will multiply and cause to come back into our lives. 
So we sow in love. We sow to be a blessing. We sow to honor. But we also sow to faith because we're people of faith. We bless you and thank you for this opportunity to sow good seed into good ground. Lord, we heard tonight hundreds of thousands of people born again. And that continues even as we speak tonight. And so we're sowing into that and we're grateful for it. In Jesus' name, we, we, we release this seed into good soil. And not only do we release the finances, we release our faith. And we thank you for the spirit of increase that's on him. It's on us in Jesus' name. And we're full of expectation. We look forward to seeing all these mighty things you're doing in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, we believe it. We received it in Jesus' name. Say amen, somebody. Praise God. So uh, go ahead and then pass the buckets. Then uh, don't forget, as they, uh, as they mentioned earlier, as the, uh, uh, Brother Deaton said, there's a table back here that you can go back there. I'm telling you, there's more of what you heard tonight back there. And so, uh, you know, that little, what was that, jump drive? I mean, that's, that's I, don't, I don't even know what they're asking for that, but that's worth every dime right there. So uh, get a hold of that and uh, make sure to avail yourself. Uh, you know, I mean, there's a lot of things you can spend your money on. Spend it on something that feeds your faith. Feeds your faith. Praise the Lord. So praise God. So glad. Thank you for all the ministers that came. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Pastor Schreier, Pastor Steele, all of you that came. Praise God. So appreciate you all. And, uh, and so uh, we're going from one degree of glory to another degree of glory, right? All right, I think the offering buckets have gone by. Why don't you stand with me and uh, give God one more shout tonight. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, we're going to hear some testimonies out of this tonight. Praise God. All right. Greet somebody, turn to somebody and say, oh, by the way, is it tomorrow night? The McBrides have Dr. Seville in the... In the uh, Waterloo. So is that somewhere online? I think you can find Actually, it's on our website. You can go to our website and find it. But, but uh, I mean, hey, tomorrow night, there is, there is no reason not to go to church tomorrow night. Hey, Amen. So uh, go there. And then Sunday morning, I believe, he's going to be at Life Point. Uh, but if you have a local church, of course, you'll be in your local church. Amen. Oh, uh, thank God for people coming into eastern Iowa, helping get the message of faith out. Amen. Don't we love Dr. Seville for doing that? So greet somebody. Tell them I will see you again soon somewhere. And uh, fellowship with somebody, and you're dismissed.